Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome to this video on the Xfinity Comcast Security Assurance versus me plus some tech tips. Now in all seriousness, who are the Comcast Security Assurance? Um, I have no idea. I actually had to do some uh, research before making this video and I'm not somebody that's going to nitpick uh, you know, on billing issues or human error and things like that. But I thought I'd make this video to one, explain what happened in case it's widespread. I'm assuming that it's not. Hopefully it's not. And um, two, for my subscribers, show some technical resources you can use to protect yourself in situations like this or do your own validations. So to begin, the short and sweet of it is when I, any device, whether it be my, uh, my phone, my iPad, my desktop, PC, any device I try to visit a web page, I would get a intercept message from Comcast, as shown here, which would say, you know, we experienced a technical issue while attempting to notify you about your Xfinity internet service. A copy of the notice was sent to your uh, Xfinity internet email account. Click here to close the message, and if the problem persists, to call the Comcast Security Assurance at this number and reference AUPM notice. So, on any of the devices, if I clicked here to close the message, this is what I would get. It would just be a white page, and in this case, I'm trying to go to cisco.com, and it has this, you know, this reference value and this garbage behind it. So I couldn't actually get to any websites, including the Xfinity.net, to view the email that they were talking about. So I had no choice but to call the number. Now, when I called the number, I spoke to Mr. Security Agent number one, and he advised me, well, and he also verified my account, uh, my name, address, and last for my social to get the account information. And at that point, he told me that my account had been identified as having a claim of copyright infringement. So whether it be downloading music, videos, or something like that. So I knew for a fact that I didn't do it. And the only two other people in the households would be my wife, who thinks the whole internet's down if Facebook doesn't work, and my 20-month-old son, who is fighting croup again for the second time right now. And even if he wasn't, I don't think he'd be able to download illegal things. Now, at first, he was generically speaking of movies and videos and specifically peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. And when I had told him that I didn't have anything like that, other than uTorrent, which I use for Linux dis uh, distribution downloads, because anyone that deals with Linux packages, you're going to probably want BitTorrent over uh, FTP or HTTP because it's so much faster. And, you know, I double checked and there was nothing. I also run, P and for the subscribers, PRTG network monitoring I have on the uplink from my switch to my router. So any traffic flows that are going through there, uh, I have a record of it for historical keeping, so if they could provide IP or port numbers and time frames, I can actually drill down and find the inside device that used the ephemeral port or whatever that matches the destination that they, they're saying that it came from. I'd be able to uh, point that out. So I was thinking, you know, maybe this is something I can do or research. So I had told security agent number one that you know, nobody would be had been downloading or uploading illegal content and all of our streaming services are legit. And then he said I could potentially have been hacked. Now that piqued my interest because I'm like, if somebody hacked my network, I, you know, it can happen. And I do have a pub, I do have my home lab publicly accessible, but that's on a DSL line that's separate from my cable. Uh, internet. So that really sparked my interest. So I started asking for specifics. Um, you know, what were the IPs? What were the ports? What content inf did I infringe on? Was it music? Was it video? What video? You know, so I could, you know, investigate my home network and figure out what's going on. He couldn't provide me any of that. And then he kept saying, well, have you received these notices before, these copyright infringements notices before? And I was like, no. Um, I haven't, and I hadn't even seen the letter yet, and apparently neither did he, because he kept saying, you know, um, it's a friendly reminder, um, you know, they're not going to do anything at this time, but to uninstall specific point-to-point -point file sharing programs that I didn't even have. So I'm like, this seems kind of strange. 
And so then when I explain to him about how I have PRTG, how I design my own internal network, how I have the modem in bridge mode, and so all the sessions and uh, firewall is in my router, and that I have network monitoring, that if he pr can give me the IP or anything, I basically told him to give me that information so I can research it. And that's when uh, he did a 180 and said, um, well, no, actually your uh, account is flagged for because you've exceeded 90% of the terabyte of space. So that whole 10, 15 minutes, however long it was of him, you know, oh, and I, I don't know if I mentioned, but he was asking if I was using proxies or VPNs and all this stuff. And uh, I was like, no. So after all this time of him suggesting that I had one that for sure after validating my account that it had been flagged for a copyright notice and two him telling me to remove point-to-point -point file sharing programs even after I told him I didn't have any and the the uTorrent program for torrents that I do have is used for Linux distributions and never downloaded anything illegal I just thought that was really strange now he ended up transferring me over to the billing group to uh, address the the concerns I had there but when I worked with billing group they figured out what the problem was with that got that fixed and then I told them about the situation with this copyright thing and they said yeah we don't see any notes if if you were part of that we would see this flagged on your account we don't see anything in of that we don't see anything in the notes so then I just got thinking about it and I'm like well that's strange so he either made it up didn't actually verify or something is actually happening so a little while later later when I had a break I called back, talked to security agent number two. Agent number one, by the way, did remove that notice so I could get to the web before transferring me. But I called back just to verify, like, was there any illegal activity going on? And do you have any information about it? And because the other agent number one, you know, told me that it was. And then the other guy pretty much straight up told me, that it was more than likely an assumption on his part because my account had never been flagged. Um, and then it wasn't till you know, after that call when I actually pulled up the notice they were talking about. So here's the actual email, guys. It says, hello, this is a courtesy notice from Comcast to let you know that you have reached 90% of your 1,024 gig monthly data plan for Xfinity Internet service. As of 12-30-2016, you have 102 gig remaining for this calendar month. So that was just a courtesy notice to say, hey, you're about to go over. And yet when I called in, because I couldn't even access this email, I was accused of pirating software after validating my account, which was not the case. I never had a letter um, for the claim that would provide IP information or anything or the content of the claimed material. My account doesn't have anything. They were just letting me know. So now when I was talking to security agent number two then he started pointing out he uh, said well from a security standpoint you know it looks like you have about in in the previous months you've had about five gigs of usage but now you're over 900 and you know in the uh, you only have less than 10 percent free do you know what the cause is so from a security perspective do you know what the cause is of the excess usage that time he specifically asked the first time I volunteered it but I was like yeah you know like I told the other guy the um, Cisco Unified Collaboration Lab um, partner uh, training lab I purchased that was about 90 gigs I hadn't turned on my Xbox or PlayStation in months when I turned that on I had a, tons of updates I got some Xbox games for Christmas uh, Doom itself had like a 30 gig update by itself I've been doing some live streaming of video VR gaming and desktop gaming at 720p 60 frames a second to YouTube as well as uploading HD videos. So yeah, compared to and th and that's something that I've been doing more and specific to this month so I can account for that. But then I got to thinking, I mean, what if it was somebody that had that maybe it was more private? You know, one of the surging things on the internet uh, in industry, adult industry, is VR porn. So what if there was somebody, a customer, that got flagged for high usage that was uh, addicted to porn? Would they be obligated to tell Xfinity 
um, yeah, I, I was downloading porn. Um, no, I wasn't doing anything illegal. I mean, they didn't specifically ask, you know, are, are you using file sharing? Are you doing anything illegal? It's, you know, asking what the source, asking the customer what the source is of their extra usage. And to me, they should have that information. All right, so here is the Xfinity data usage report. And this is essentially what they did. Um, if you go here, you can say compare last three months. And so here you can see September, October, November, December. And so this security team that at first accused me of using copyright material with no proof and ended up being wrong, so that was an assumption. And then two, somebody looks at this and then sees the high one and then wants me to explain where that came from. They should know that if it was anything illegal or you know going on, that's one thing. But it, it just seemed very shady to me because I'm sure a lot of it is pirated related, but you can't assume that on every call after validating an account and not even checking and just start giving a spiel when it had nothing to do with me. And then, like I say, with the second person, should Xfinity Security ask you what you're doing with your internet connection? Technically, they know, like with mine, all my streaming services, Netflix, HBO, Amazon, um, Rhapsody, or Nap uh, Napster now, Spotify, Cisco, where all my downloads are coming from, and their content engines uh, for delivery. So, I don't know, it seems like they're a tier one group that really doesn't have any information. And so if they're, if they try to, you know, give you scare tactics or whatever, um, I don't know what they do, and maybe somebody for Xfinity can um, define what their actual role is, but the fact that they're dishonest and then probing for information that, frankly, they don't, it's none of their business, um, what were my biggest concerns with that? Now, and because of this, I did find one other thing, and this isn't necessarily Xfinity's fault, more of mine for not being up to speed on all their changes and everything, but one of the things, if you do the view detailed data usage uh, I see that it has my modem and the um, how much it's used but then there's this unknown I was like you know what is that and that's when I noticed that the Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspot was enabled and so even though I have mine in bridge mode and the light is off you can see that the Wi-Fi is actually still working even though um, it's off and so what I had to do is actually go into uh, my services and or under my account go down to manage internet and choose manage hotspot and here make sure it's disabled and I'll show you here next um, I'll, I'll show you a quick video on how I isolated that and then I had to do some googling to find out that's had what happened but there's a cool app if you don't have it for wireless troubleshooting that can be handy now for those of you that are interested in what I would do if there had been uh, legit uh, copyright stuff going on that I needed to investigate, uh, PRTG from Pessler is a free, if you haven't heard of it, it's a free network uh, monitoring program. Uh, originally they would only give 10 devices, now they offer 100. And all you do, pull up my home network here, and if I do um, show IP flow export, uh, you can see so far there's been uh, 13 million flows exported for data statistics and if I do a show run uh, section flow uh, you can see on the individual interfaces I have the um, ingress and egress and then where do I want to export it to in this case I'm going to expect, uh, export it out this gigabit interface use version 9 with the destination port and uh, or destination IP and port, which you specify in PRTG, and what you get are data flows like this, and it will give you all the different protocols, the top talkers, top connections, and you can break this down. You can, you've got the two-hour graph, two days, and you can see when you click on, you've got your timetable here on the left, uh, a chart 
and then all the devices and IPs, how much is being used. Um, and it, it's very handy. It's all built right in to the Cisco iOS routers and it's free. So that's pretty awesome. And speaking of free, there's a program called Wi-Fi Analyzer for Android devices, if you haven't heard of it. And there's a bunch of different modes you can have it in for um, channel graphs, AP lists, and 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. But in this mode here, this is the signal meter, so you can uh, zero in on a particular SSID and get the signal strength. And in this case, I wanted to validate that the SSID Xfinity Wi-Fi with that MAC address was coming from this modem because you can see the Wi-Fi signal there is already off. So when I turned to unplug my modem altogether and during the next polling cycle, you see that it drops completely to zero. So that's how I knew for sure that something was going on. So then I did some research and found out that even if you have your modem in bridge mode, they have the hotspot enabled by default and that allows you know other Xfinity customers to essentially use your network and didn't really want didn't really care for that so I went in and disabled the hotspot from my account and then used the same application then to verify that the signal drops and it's no longer broadcasting as guest network So with that, that was basically based on my first-hand experience with them, and I've done some research on this group, and I've seen some people post, like on Reddit, some actual letters where they did specify IPs of copyright infringements. Those are legit, um, but the actual group that you're talking to, they seem to, because um, maybe, I mean, even if you are legitimately um, pirating things, I mean, that's your choice and your own risk, but the group itself I don't think they really have any idea what's going on because they don't have any if they don't have that letter uh, they don't seem to be able to give any specifics uh, apparently they get a lot of these calls because they just made assumption about me without validating anything and when that was being probed for questions they're basing it off the graph I showed you where it showed I had you know less usage the three previous months but then the current month was higher and then they were asking me what that was so but that's the group that gives you the power to uh, reinstate your internet. So I don't know exactly what their actual role is or how they notate the accounts or you know what is truly within their scope. But it's just both um, scenarios that I had experienced from you know security agent one and two just seem you know a little bit suspicious. One with the assumption, and then two with the probing for what my usage was for. So. At any rate, hopefully uh, you don't have these issues, or and if you do, hopefully they don't give you a hard time and get it resolved quickly. And on a positive note, you, uh, you can try out PRTG or the Wi-Fi scanner uh, on your phone if it will be helpful for you. So thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next video.